Today is a lesson on waiting on God. Good Friday morning. As we wait on the Lord, He will work through the circumstances of life to bring about His ultimate will. He doesn't need our help. When Ishbosheth, Saul's son, heard that Abner had died at Hebron, his courage failed and all Israel was dismayed. Now Saul's son had two men who were captains of raiding bands. The names of one was Bana and the name of the other Rechab. Sons of Rimmon, a man of Benjamin from Beeroth. Beeroth is also counterpart of Benjamin. The Benjamites fled to Gidom and have been sojourners there to this day. Jonathan, the son of Saul, had a son who was crippled in his feet. He was five years old when the news of Saul and Jonathan came from Jezreel. His nurse took him up and fled, and as she fled in her haste, he fell and became lame. His name was Mephibosheth. How easy it is for us to want to help God along and move past his timing by manipulating situations so that we can reach our goals and find success as we define it. Nevertheless, we're called to patiently wait on the Lord. Sooner or later, our sins always require consequences. Verses 5 through 7. Now the sons of Rimmon, the Barathite, and Rechab, the Becca, set out, and about the heat of the day they came to the house of Ishbosheth, as he was taking his noonday rest. And they came into the midst of the house as if to get wheat, and they stabbed him in the stomach. Then Rechab and Bana, his brother, escaped. When they came to the house as he lay in his bed in his bedroom, they struck him and put him to death and beheaded him. They took his head and went by the way of Araba all night. The story gets worse. Rationalizing our actions and manipulating the circumstances to further success as we define it at the expense of God's expressed will, it always ends in judgment. Finishing verses 8 through 12. They brought the head of Ishbosheth to David at Hebron, and they said to the king, Here is the head of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, your enemy, who sought your life. The Lord has avenged my lord the king this day on Saul and on his offspring. But David answered, Rechab and Bana, his brother, the sons of Rimmon, the Bereshite, as the Lord lives, who has redeemed my life out of every adversity, when one told me, Behold, Saul is dead, and thought he was bringing me good news, I seized him and killed him at Ziklag, which was the reward I gave him for his news. How much more, when wicked men have killed a righteous man in his own house on his bed, shall I not now require his blood at your hand and destroy you from the earth? And David commanded his young men, and they killed them, and cut off their hands and feet, and hanged them beside the pool at Hebron. But they took the head of Ishbosheth and buried it in the tomb of Abner at Hebron. It's the height of presumption for the perpetrator of wickedness to present his evil deeds as a gift from God. Human effort, it never secures and it never destroys God's will. Thank you, God, that you give us grace to face our problems rather than run from them. But Holy Spirit, may the fruit of patience ever be in our soul, lest we presume to do your job. Thy will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow.